Hi and welcome to my video. So this is the Museum of Flight in Tukwila, Washington, which is a suburb of Seattle where Boeing is located. And the Museum of Flight is exactly that, it's a giant plane museum. And as you can see, this place is pretty cool. This is the outside hangar part with the uh, large full planes and you can walk around in them and everything. And um, this probably was the coolest part of the museum other than the old uh, World War I and World War II planes. So this is a uh, British Airways Concorde, and I've always seen these on you know, TV and videos and stuff, but I've never actually been in one um, like most people, and so the opportunity to be able to get in one was pretty cool. So here I'm just waiting to be able to get in, because as you can see, this plane is... Um, Tiny, actually. I mean, they're really super long, but um, I didn't realize that they were so skinny. And I mean, that's of course because they fly at, you know, whatever, 200 something miles an hour. So I had to wait to get in here. And up here's the cockpit. And they have these like um, plexiglass partitions uh, covering everything so you can't, you know, fiddle with dials and play with everything, which is probably a good thing because I'm one of those people that would definitely uh, touch every single thing in this but as you saw that cockpit is like four seats and then this is actually pretty th skinny to walk through so if you were a larger individual it'd be hard to get through here but as you can see the uh, plane takes off at 253 miles an hour and um, you know they have these little signs and they have all the seats covered here and this is the front part of the fuselage actually there's two parts um, where you exit is in the middle and as you can see it flies at Mach 2 which is uh, two times the speed of sound um, I'm saying that as if I actually know what I'm talking about but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's correct right Mach 2 means speed of sound but right there it broke the uh, record it was two hours and 52 minutes from New York to Heathrow I believe and then, as you see, the uh, bathrooms are pretty nice. And then, yeah, here's the other bathroom. And back here is the whole rest of the plane. So as you see, it's a huge plane. It holds a decent amount of people, but it is really skinny and kind of hard to walk around in. But um, this thing was super cool. I was super happy I got to walk in this thing and take a look. And look at this place, too. It's really cool how big this place is and how there's all these planes that you get to just walk around in. So the next plane I had planned on getting in to was uh, Air Force One, which they do have one of the Air Force Ones here. It was the one that Nixon and JFK and, of course, Lyndon Johnson used. Um, and so that one's here. That's pretty cool. That is one of only three or something uh, British Airways um, Concords in the world that are like able to be viewed or something like that I guess but we're gonna actually make our way to the uh, brand new giant plane and, and look at how huge this thing is this is the 787 Dreamliner made by Boeing and I'll tell you right now you could drive a dump truck through this engine it is huge it is crazy how huge this plane is and it is really cool I would love to fly in one of these things um, especially if you could afford first class I mean that would be amazing to be able to just you know fly across the world on this plane it wouldn't be bad at all I'll tell you that right now it's a lot better than flying um, some of those other planes that I've flown in over the years but anyways we're gonna walk inside this plane this plane is really cool Now, of course, on the Concorde, they couldn't have any, like, employee tour guides kind of hanging out inside, but in um, these bigger planes, they do. And they're in there to kind of keep an eye on you and to answer questions, and they'll answer every question that you can see. So, as you see, this is the front galley, and up here is the cockpit, which is uh, really fancy looking. I mean, not too bad if you're a pilot. But, yeah, here's the uh, first-class seating area, which... Uh, Talk about a nice place to kind of stretch out your legs. Some of these are at such 
And here's more my section in the uh, coach area. But even then, this is really nice. And, um, you know, I've flown in big planes, but uh, this Dreamliner is really fancy. And it really lets you see how big these planes are, too, when they don't have all the seats in them. It's, you realize how uh, large of structures and these things are, you know, how, how big these things are. And there's the NASA plane out there through that window. Nice this nice gentleman, he was sitting yeah, here. I didn't really want to bother him, but I mean, this in the bed he had a nice eat. place to sit. It was nice and air-conditioned in here. And um, they have pictures right there. And, that, and what I'm asking him about is the crew rest area, which is you crawl up through there, and that's where their rest area is. Because on those long-haul flights, um, the crew members actually need to... Uh, clock out and sleep. Oh, is this the crew That's rest area? how they can fly on these things. So and then it goes up? They'll crawl up there and in between shifts when you're usually sleeping, there's some That's of cool. them sleeping up there also. Oh. Now, this Boeing 747 here is actually pretty special. Um, this is the first Boeing 747 ever. So this is the uh, large plane that myself and probably most people have flown on. And again, you can see how big that 787 is. I mean, again, it is a gigantic plane, especially even compared to the 747. But um, you'll see once we go inside, this is the first 747 ever, so this is the one that they actually flew for testing and everything. Um, you know, to make sure they didn't blow up in the sky and, you know, could actually fly being so large. So it's really crazy in here because it's not finished. Um, and you'll see that as soon as we walk inside. I was kind of curious what was behind this partition. I thought maybe you'd be able to see the uh, cockpit or something, but you can't. And I didn't realize how large these things are below deck. You can look down here and you can see the hole underneath the deck area. And then that goes up top where the, uh, you know, I'm assuming the uh, party cabin kind of bar area for first class passengers was back in the day but yeah as you see this is all the testing equipment of course nowadays they could test pretty much this whole thing with um you know a couple laptops and everything but computers that they had back then when they tested this stuff it took all these huge setups and these things sitting around but yeah this thing is cool how huge this thing is inside of it um without anything with the ceiling kind of open and if they had the floor open I mean you'd really realize how big these planes are now this part was interesting I didn't realize this this is the refueling part I mean if you're an Air Force person or something like that and you fly one of those jumbo jets that fuels planes in flight um, you'd be pretty used to seeing one of those but they had that on this plane so that way they could fuel it and keep on flying it. or it could fuel other planes or something I don't know what the guy was telling somebody else but he was explaining it to him and I just kind of walked through the whole thing I didn't really pay that much attention and before I get a bunch of comments and stuff I'm no whiz when it comes to airplanes by any means and again I just kind of walked through all these planes so I didn't sit there and I'm not a read every plaque or something. That spiral staircase might have actually gone to the uh, crew cabin where the pilots and stuff were. Because I think on the 747s, the, they're on top, maybe? I don't know. But anyway, 
Here is Air Force One, and this is pretty cool. Now, of course, this isn't actually Air Force One because Air Force One is the call sign designation for any plane that the President of the United States is on. So, if Donald Trump was on his little Donald Trump jet, that would technically be Air Force One. But anyways, this is the Air Force One that um, Richard Nixon and Lyndon Johnson and uh, JFK used which makes this one a pretty cool plane. You'll see because aesthetics wise, it's really old and retro and it would be cool as heck to fly on a, like an old retro plane like this. I'm pretty sure the uh, ones nowadays are a little uh, fancier, but they actually, this is the locker where they lock the uh, black box in, the safes, um, and also you can launch nukes. And this is just the galley area to prep food for president and staff and so forth. Now I was going to sit here and wait to get in here. This is like the uh, president's room where his desk and stuff is. But then I realized it was glass on the other side and you can just see right in. So I just walked past those folks. And as you see, there's his his desk and his, you know, I'm sure his cabinet members and stuff sit there on those seats and those nice round tables and, you know, you just hold court while you're flying. And then here's kind of your sit and talk across the table to people and stuff area. And then I love this. This is the secretary station where she would sit there and type up the presidential stuff of course and then you know the lowly staff sits back here in the back and then I love that this th these are the uh, sleeping berths a little tiny you know you're pretty much sleeping in the overhead bin and more galley stuff and everything I'm sure lots of coffee and whiskey and fun things like that back in the day and then check out the bathrooms back here this is pretty nice I'm not sure what was I think those were more sleeping worse which would really suck that you had to sleep right next to the can but anyways the bathrooms are really nice and like I said that's really cool that this Air Force One is here so as I was walking over here I was trying to uh, figure out how to get into the um, big United plane right there is and I believe that's a 737 or something I mean like the standard plane that everybody's been <laughs> on if you've ever flown on a plane um, but actually this little walk-up area is uh, a FedEx mock-up and it's showing like the history of package delivery by planes and of course the way they used to do it was they would buy like the old commercial jets and then just gut the inside and shove all your junk inside there but um, it's showing how nowadays they have these planes that just basically have a whole empty fuselage and it's got this track system and they can load all these uh, boxes into it and get all your stuff in and it was kind of funny where on the other side where it showed like the plexiglass it showed all your like loose things and it just shows them all kind of shoved in there but it's showing you how they'll kind of configure this package delivery system and you know of course all of them FedEx Amazon even with their new planes and all the big you know air freight companies uh, UPS and stuff this is pretty much standard now on how they do it they have these track systems and these big cases and they just load all your junk in like your guitar right there and it slides in and that's how they fly your stuff from uh, you know New York City all the way to uh, San Francisco or something now over here this is actually the I, I think it was called to the moon or something it's a special exhibit it was like an extra ten dollars and it was really cool I only shot a couple uh, seconds worth of video really but there's one of the lunar rovers at first I thought it was all kind of these little things like this and um, you know like some of the smaller things and like press clippings but as you move through the exhibit you actually get to see the uh, rocket engines and the lunar module, the actual lunar modules in here and stuff like that. So it was definitely worth $10. It was really cool to walk around in here.
So this is actually um, across the street where the um, airplanes and stuff were that you were able to walk around. This is uh, Discovery, or one of them. This is the uh, spaceship, and you can walk around in the payload area and stuff. And um, see how big the uh, spacecraft is. It, it's pretty huge. It's kind of cool to walk around and look at this whole thing. And if I really wanted to spend a lot of time, I could have really uh, messed around over here at this thing for a long time and um, when you look through the air capsule there there was actually people on the other side so I'm guessing they do private tours of the uh, front part of the uh, uh, of the you know of the uh, spacecraft and stuff but no big deal I think that's some kind of thing that you know I don't know maybe you pay extra or something like that or you just ask but um, I was more interested in kind of getting through the whole place. This place is huge, so it's hard to get through the entire thing in a short amount of time. So this is actually back in the main building. This is the uh, control tower, and it kind of shows you all the stuff and all the equipment, and you know, you can play around with lots of things in here, which is kind of always my favorite thing. But uh, the coolest thing about this was that you can see the uh, Blue Angels sitting out there. Um, if you haven't seen it on my video, I have the video of the Blue Angels actually starting up and flying off. And I think I even say that in the video that it's the Renton Airport and we're not in Renton. It's um, the Boeing Airport is what that airfield is there. It's uh, Boeing's airfield. Now this is the Boeing Red Barn, it's called. It is Boeing's actual um, first manufacturing plant. Is where This is where they made all the, uh, you know, janky little airplanes that had, you know, cloth wings and stuff like that. But this is it. When you pull up to the Museum of Flight, it's uh, kind of the most distinct area other than the um, kind of overhead part with the giant planes. I mean, that's pretty distinct by itself. But um, the Red Barn's sticking out. And this part was really cool with all the old stuff and uh, just kind of showing you a lot of stuff. I didn't shoot a lot of video in here. Um, I blew through this pretty quick because I honestly wanted to get to the next room next to this, which is where all the World War One and World War II planes were and everything. And I didn't shoot video walking around in there. I took a lot of photos. And so I've included all the photos and stuff of planes and stuff at the end of this video. So feel free to sit back, listen to some music, and look at the photos.